has two Thought Scour, three Gut Shot, uh, only three Mana Leaks, and is running two Swords. Jerry's List looks pretty good. Three Mana Leaks. Uh, nice thing to have. It helps you kind of feel like you're pre-boarded in the Delver Mirror. Right, and so it's very good in the Delver Mirror. Against Frights, I'm actually thinking that some of it's these changes, bad. it's yeah. pretty, yeah, this is pretty bad. Uh, I think having more gut shots is more important for Jerry in a good way than having less mana leaks is right. important for Brian. So what Jerry's going to have to do is he's cards like Restoration Angel will not shine as much in this matchup. Because Brian's reanimation spells happen to be, you know, in, in an ideal world will be a horde of Sun Titans, Jer sometimes Delver could get into this matchup where they get the Frights player down to about 10, could then Vapor snag their way to victory. Jerry's not really going to have that available to him if Brian has a Sun Titan draw. He's going to have to win on the aggro plan. So Brian on the, Brian on the play goes with Forest, Jerry Seachrome Coast, then Brian will Mulch turn two. Ooh, double forest, not the best for Brian, because uh, those lands both uh, normally come into play untapped, and normally you want to be playing your fast lands on the first few turns. And there's a Shimmering Grotto there, too, which Brian's playing four of. And he'll yeah, it's going to be pretty helpful for him here. Jerry representing Mana Leak here. Almost certainly, um, most Delver keeps would involve a turn one Ponder or Delver. If they don't have a Ponder or a Delver in them, they almost certainly have a Mana Leak. Yeah, so Brian's seen. Faithless Looting gets Mana Leaked. And of sex, there we are. Yep, Geist of Saint Traft. Jerry's mana base being ideal, it's one, probably one more land haunch, short of being everything he needs for the rest of the game. Remember, Delver usually most lands past the fifth are complete blanks. Yeah, that's one major problem when you're playing Delver. So uh, Brian has the uh, lingering souls here, and uh... now ideally these souls would trade with Geist. They probably don't do that as Jerry will threaten something like a, a gut shot or a vapor snag. But because Brian can flash back lingering souls, he may not care. Yeah, he might just go for the double block anyway and force Jerry to use a card to deal with one half lingering souls. Jerry also has another guy to St. Trapped, so he may just push in the four damage, trade, and then play the second one. Instead, he's just going to go straight for Sword of War and Peace. Probably because he doesn't have the... I don't think believe he has a fifth land to come into play untapped to equip a second Geist next turn. Now, uh, Brian with a few options this turn. Uh, could flash back lingering souls. Ooh, all right. Going to unburial rights phantasmal image, which will take care of this geist and the next geist, which is in Jerry's hand. Pretty good. Very good. Uh, sort of one piece is a little bit of a threat here, though, uh, because of how Brian has mixed up his finishers. All his finishers are white cards, so they won't be able to block. But I mean, Elishon will still manage to kill most of Jerry's cards. If Jerry can hook up, if Jerry's representing an end of turn restoration angel, if Jerry does have that, that could become a problem for Brian here. Yeah, it could be a pretty big problem for him, too. Now, Brian does have a main deck, Ancient Grudge, which could be really helpful here. Post Very forward, much. He also gets another one. So, uh, Brian, mana problems. Uh, going to not be able to cast this Sun Titan in his hand. <laughs> With only these Forest, For Forest, Black Cleave Cliffs, and two Shimmering Grottos. Yeah, so we'll have to get to eight mana to cast a Sun Titan. Jerry will snap a leak. Very strong plays. That's going to get an equip, too. Yeah, that's huge for Jerry. I mean, Frights has a very ambitious mana base, and sometimes that mana base can hurt it. As so we see, another land, but still no white sources, so Sun Titan's being stranded in Brian's hand. Brian is emptying his own hand, though, to try to lessen the impact of a Sword of War and Peace. Yeah, so uh, going to take six here. Mm, six, and Jerry, the, the bigger issue is that Jerry will gain is gaining, I believe, four off this, which really means Brian's going to have to assemble, he's going to have to assemble Sun Titan somehow to win this. Yeah, pretty quickly, too. Yeah. Ponder from Jerry reveals two The other option scouts. that uh, Brian has next turn is that he can unburial rights his uh, Phantasmal Image copy, Snapcaster Mage, and then Snapcaster the Mulch. Right. So if he's looking just for more lands, yeah, that's actually a, pre it's a pretty decent play. What the the scarier part of that play is that it will make the Sun Titan vulnerable to another mana leak. But I think at this point Brian needs to be digging deeper, and we'll probably see that play or something similar to it. It also gives him a blocker for the for the Snapcaster. Exactly, range. it's a blue creature. Right. So. Right, Jerry's choosing to shuffle off the ponder. He'd seen Thought Scour, Thought Scour land, I believe, so he's opting to shuffle off that. It's reasonable. At times you could keep the th two Thought Scours on top, draw the one Thought Scour. It's really not, the one the not much one middle, way or the other. The, 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 deck is, the top of the deck with a Thought Scour is pretty much nothing anyway. Right, 
and he'll make a Geist of Saint, his second Geist of Saint draft. Yeah, now it's unlikely that Brian's going to make the Unburial Rate Snapcaster play because he's under such pressure on the board. He really needs to do something like Elish Norn right now. Otherwise, he's probably going to be losing this game. Yeah, the problem is Jerry's threatening an awful lot of damage. Um, Brian's creatures really can't block effectively. Geist, Jerry will happily probably trade Geist for four damage at this point because he just he wants to ensure that he has a two-turn clock. And as long as Brian can't answer the Sword of War and Peace, Jerry does have a two-turn clock right now. Yeah, so uh, Jerry uh, can also suit up the uh, Geist with the sword next turn. Mm -hmm. Going to be a huge problem for Brian dealing with that. He's going to have to unburial rights. <laughs> Third Shimmering Grotto for Brian. Yeah, not the best mana for Brian this game. Plenty of lands, just spells are very ambitious. Tip he and burial rights is the image, and then swings for two. And then he'll flashback lingering souls, though they are still white cards. Yep. Uh, Snapcaster will swing for six again. Uh, so another six? It does give Brian two more turns at this pace. He's in a restoration angel. Up a ponder. And he points out that Jerry cannot make that play. Snapcaster gives Pearl White and the Frustration Angel is a targeted <laughs> ability. It's a little bit of a, of a gotcha there on <laughs> for Jerry. But so I mean it turns out he probably would have end stepped the angel anyway, so this time he just has to um, main phase it. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and move the sword over to the angel. Play land, pass the turn. Uh, Brian's going to have to make sure he empties his hand, like, that he may, he has to make sure he casts one of his cards here, otherwise this angel is lethal. Shouldn't be a problem, but... The bigger worry is if Jerry has a card like Vapor Snag, Brian's probably dead on the next swing. It's going to be really hard for Brian to win through a single Vapor Snag at this point. Yes. Well, the bigger problem is that Brian's deck is fairly, like, Sword on Angel, Brian's, actually just in his deck, has very few answers to Sword on Angel. Yeah, he really needs the Ancient Grudge. And, yeah. I mean, his deck's really good at digging yeah. through Brian 40 could, cards. He could resolve an Elishnorn here, and we'd probably be able to race with an Elishnorn here. I, yeah. Maybe. But not, I'm not even sure if he, if he had an Elishnorn in play right now, if that would be enough. Yeah, I don't actually believe, oh, it's very close. It's pretty close. It's also pretty draw dependent. So he finally has the mana for the Sun Titan at a <laughs> discount of eight. He can make the Sun Titan into another Sun Titan. And no target for the image. With army of six sixes, and he's going to go ahead and pass the turn then. Or is he's debating if he wants to swing here. He can push in three damage. Uh, still not enough. The life gain off Sword of War and Peace has really put Jerry out of range. Yeah, now it's just really rough. I think the Phantasmal Image will have to copy the Restoration Angel. Yeah, so I'm not sure which one's copying. Um, it doesn't really matter which one it's copying, I don't think, because the problem is yeah. they're all white creatures, unless he's copying Snapcaster Mage. But nothing, nothing, it's hard to copy anything that would block uh, the Sorted Up Angel. Sorted Up Angel. I mean, image is on Sun Titan right now, which is probably right. the best because it's just there isn't a good choice for it. It's just the biggest thing. Right. This time, Jerry will angel the Snapcaster Mage for Ponder. And a Vapor Snag in hand, he wins. Yeah. Well, it will get him so yeah, Vapor Snag the Sun Titan, puts him at seven, swings for seven. Mm -hmm. All right, first game goes to Jerry Thompson. Both both these two players, Brian Braun Dwin, looking to be going 8-0 in, in the standard portion of the Invitational and looking to be the takes sole possession of the lead for the tournament. Both of these are the remaining players at X1. Yeah, now, uh, Brian down a game, playing against what he believes to be one of his better matchups. Well, Delver's I mean, a very tricky deck. It's, um... Yeah. I mean, also, you, he drew Forest Forest Shimmering Grotto Shimmering Grotto. <laughs> I think that may have something to do That's with fair. it, too. But... He also had never saw, like, the... Despite get, going through, like, 15 cards, didn't find the Elishnorn. Right. Off the top, things like that. But 
there's no doubting that Jerry Thompson is one of the better Delver players in the room today. Right. Jerry, just an incredible player. Something about Jerry is that Jerry can play any style of deck to a, uh, a very, very um, high level of like skill. Mm -hmm. He is somebody who's just constantly impressing me. He's played since before I've played competitive flight, which is yeah, before both of pretty us, long time. He's a uh, he's a dinosaur, and yeah. he's just always been so good and just always getting better because he keeps playing so much. Right. Now, so uh, look, Jerry looking... top twentyed the uh, Pro Tour Dark Ascension, I believe, maybe twenty second. He was up there. Yep, he was in the top twenty-five of Pro Tour Dark Ascension. Yeah, and got back to gold and is now on on the train again. Jerry has, uh, I think, fallen off the train and gotten back on the train more than anybody else. Can't verify that, but that's that certainly seems possible. He's the best part. Is he seems to get back on the train at will, which is you know something uh, I think a lot of us would be pretty envious of. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, I, uh, I tried once to get back on the train. It's harder now than when you got on the first time. It's uh. Well, it wasn't easy then either. It's I mean, then, it, then I just magically got on the train. I got like, like I got a magic ticket out of the chocolate bar. Just open, open one to get a golden ticket. Yeah, I got a golden ticket. Train. I got twenty pro points all in one shot. <laughs> Whoa! That's that is for those of you at home wondering. The easiest way to get on the train is to win a PTQ and then win the PT. Yeah, if you, you just win the if pro you just tour, win the pro then tour, you're on the train. You are yes, you are. Is really. Probably the easiest way to get onto the train. Definitely the easiest way to get on the train. All right. <laughs> so looking looking at our top eight players right now in our standings, actually we have at X two or better we have only eight players. So we have right now tied for first Jerry Thompson and Brian Bronduin. Uh, at X one one we have Michael Hetrick. He's playing against Adam Kai, who's at X two. Uh, our other players we have Lauren Nolan, who is playing this round against Matt Costa, who's our other undefeated player in standard. And the last two are Kyle McDaniel and Adam Boyd. Uh, Shaheen Sarani, after getting his first loss, has taken a second loss and currently has dropped into ninth place. So that, that opponent match win percentage, it's pretty high. Yeah, for Shaheen, Shaheen has the best breakers in the tournament. So, presume, you know, for what, what that'll do is if he does poorly right now, it'll set up some very hard math for people who want to try to draw into top eight because there'll be this player lurking outside the top eight with amazing breakers, which will probably make a lot of people play. So he'll be that guy. He'll be that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, our top eight should start to take form. Probably starting in Legacy. Yeah, in uh, a round or two, we'll start to have a top eight. Yeah. I'm excited to see uh, all these players make it. How is Jim Davis? So, Ryan, I think Jim Davis Ooh. is at 28th. Yeah. Where X2s go down through 20. Our X3s go down through 27th. Those are probably all the players that we're sure are live for top eight. Jim, some of the players at X11, we have Jim Davis, Ben Weinberg, and Kit Holland. Maybe, maybe in contention for top eight still. Uh, Adam Prozac and Evan Wagstaff maybe as well. Michael but, Jacob lingering around the, uh, the top yeah, some, standings. Yeah, some good, so, so points. plenty of strong names in the X3 bracket. We have Michael Jacob, Ali, Ali Antrazi, uh, Sam Black, Christian Valenti, Todd Anderson, David Sharfman, Brandon Nelson, all still in contention. Even Adam Boyd, uh, winner of multiple Star City Games Open events. Alright, game two, Brian's, gonna, Brian's going to go to six. Brian Mulligan here. So there is a sideboard plan of Brian where you side into uh, swords and Swords and creatures. Is this is that for this matchup? No. Um, against Blue White Delver, you have a one card sideboard, which is the Ancient Grudge. Which is the Ancient Grudge. It actually may have become a two card sideboard, and you might bring in the Phantasmal Image now. Also. Okay. I think you do bring in the Phantasmal Image. That makes sense. Because we had four Phantasmal Image when our sideboard was a one card sideboard. Sure. So, so I imagine you want to turn we can just into make that. the deck into that. So I think he'd probably be cutting. Um, a Gavany Township, or a Black Leaf Clips, and a, uh, or he might just cut two, uh, two Tracker's Instincts and bring in an Image and an Ancient Grudge. From Jerry, I would expect to see him bring in a Surgical Extraction and probably two Dissipates in this matchup. Jerry's playing a Surgical Extraction? He has a Surgical Extraction in his board. That's so brutal, because he tested with them. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, he has a surgical extraction and two dissipates. And I, yeah, dissipate also seems pretty good since Brian's double casting a lot of his spells, and a lot of his spells are very high impact. I think the extra hard counter would be pretty de pretty decent here. It's very funny. Cherry has surgical. Usually does not have a surgical. There's no way. Usually is surgical. All right. Oh, so this game has begun. Uh, Brian, uh, starting things off with a Faithless Looting. He's discarded another Faithless Looting and a Forest. Delver of Secrets from Jerry, followed by another Glacial Fortress. Those yeah, lines I'll do come into play tapped, but no biggie. Time locks himself a little bit here. Some, I mean, it's always disappointing when your lands come into play tapped. Possibly Jerry has a turn three Geist of St. Traft or something similar, which is why he's playing them this way. I doubt he would have kept a hand with just two Glacial Fortresses. Jerry draws his card. Delver does not flip and Brian has made two Lingering Souls tokens. All right, so it wasn't Geist, but it was Sword of War and Peace, which is made by Jerry. Sword of War and Peace, pretty good one. It's an excellent card. It's one of, I think, the most important cards in Jerry's deck in, deck in this matchup. So the question is, is can Brian find an Ancient Crush? He presumably has two of them now instead of just one. Yes. And I don't he think he has does. it, and he's digging for it. He's leaving open the green man, uh, the forest, just in case he finds an ancient grudge here and can discard it. Seems to make sense. Brian uh, does have an Elish Norn in the yard. If he so chooses to, after flashing back to his faith is living. May have to go into a racing mode a little earlier than expected here. I mean, but you an absence you can't really time. race a sort of war and peace at this point. I mean, I think he's got he's got to find the ancient grudge. Jerry will be gaining six life off per swing off this sword. It just seems it seems really unlikely that he'd be able to actually race. That's true. So he does need to find the grudge at some point. Yeah, he does have two of them. Jerry, uh, not revealing the Delver. Sometimes Delver is just a 1-1. One, one. So, uh, Sword of War and Peace may get equipped here. Yep, Brian does have a... can hope to chain enough green creatures that he can... he'll get a couple blocks if he wants to on the sword until he's able to find the Ancient Grudge, but... Like I said, it's still... if, if Jerry right now has a, bit, has a Dissipate in his hand, I think it's going to be very hard for Brian to win this game. Definitely true. And I mean, if Jerry passes without equipping the sword, we can be pretty sure that he has a mental link or dissipate. Yeah. Well, it he does have a fourth but... land, so probably, yeah, that would be a tell on dissipate. It's a dissipate. I'm going to drop Hero of Bladehold, happily trading away his Delver there. Hero, quite good here. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, this is he's going to have to find the Ancient Grudge. Well, now it doesn't even necessarily need the Ancient Grudge. Well, the, yeah, the Ancient Grudge doesn't help as much because... I mean, he doesn't have a way to reanimate the Elish Norn either. Uh, Hero he doesn't Blade, have the Umbaroids in hand? Does he have an Umbaroids in hand? Okay, the Cavern is naming human, though. Yeah, Cavern naming human. Um, yeah, Jerry's attacking on two fronts now. Brian needs to answer the sword, but he also just needs to answer straight out the Hero. Brian drawing, he's going to hit two lands off that. He does have, I think, a Phantasmal image. Looks like it. Which is a so fine card, but not not exactly enough right here. Not what he's looking for right now. Not at all. If he can answer the sword, the image will be very helpful. Because then that answers the hero. Well, temporarily. Presumably, Jerry, I can't imagine, has cut his gut shots. Or vapor snags. So Seems very unlikely. Imaging the, the hero... Well, while a Valiant's plan, I'm not sure it actually works that well. So Brian plays out the rest of his hand. Um, yeah, Jerry has a gut shot right there. Oh, so yeah. The hero will not be battle crying the rest of Brian's team. Jerry gets the best snuff out ever. Yes. Yeah, colorless, no color restriction. All right, so uh, it's Cavern of Souls naming human. Uh, we'll probably suit up this sword. So a vapor snag. snag. Going to hit that. Surprised he didn't use the gut shot there. Uh, <laughs> vapor snag will not deal his opponent a point. 
doesn't really matter because uh, this clock is very fast. Yeah, my guess is that the reason is that Jerry's wants to be mana efficient and he doesn't have another play. He prefers this turn. So since Gut Shot and Vapor Snag will essentially do the same thing, um, he's just going to use the Vapor Snag here. Also, what you might tell me is that he, he might have a second Vapor Snag as well. He's going to Gut Shot the Birds and Ponder. Or no, I'm play Delver. Yeah, you would have pondered first. One of the classic strategy things with Delver is usually casting, if you're going to cast Ponder in a turn, it's usually the first thing you do in a turn, even before making a land drop. Very true. I mean, you get more information, therefore yes. you can make your plays. It's one of the classic mistakes I see people on turn two of a Delver game make their land drop and then cast Ponder, and you say, I think like, oh, that's probably the wrong order of doing that. Probably. I've made that mistake, and we all have. Sure. Card manipulation spells have always been like that. A lot of time you see people uh, impulse after they play land, things like that. The olden days. Now it's all about pondering. <laughs> all right, so uh, Brian, looking for an answer still hasn't found one um he's emptying his hand to try to give himself another turn i don't even know if he has that turn right now though especially when jerry can gut shot this image no he used a gut shot my apologies yeah, he, uh, but he can he find ponder so he can find some way to deal with it uh, i don't think there's a way in there to kill the, no, the I think fake he's hero probably shuffling. sure it has two lands in it which is really not what he wants all right well he's gonna keep it because i think that just kills brian yeah, swing, putting yeah. two more creatures into play. That's that's, it. that's the match. Jerry Thompson, now your current leader at Star City Invitational. He is 11-1 and one after 12 rounds of play with four rounds to go. Jerry, already a previous Invitational winner, looking very much like he's on his way to top-aiding another one. Yeah, top-aided multiple Invitationals, won one of them. Very, very good. Very well on his way. Yeah, 